So here we are at the last module, the last video, and I intentionally put this video last, or this session last, because I think it's one of the most important ones for HIA. And this is stakeholder engagement. It's a, it's a core value. It is critical for HIA processes. And so we're going to talk today about how to engage stakeholders, who are stakeholders, and why it matters for the HIA process. So a few times throughout the modules, I've referenced the minimum ele elements and practice standards. And there are comments in there about stakeholder engagement. And I don't like to read exactly off the slides, but I want to highlight some of the words here on bold, in bold because I think they're really important. So when we think about stakeholder engagement in HIA, we're not talking about just some cursory way of connecting to people. This is meaningful and inclusive engagement. It is authentic engagement, and it happens at each step of the HIA process. And we know that when you have meaningful and inclusive stakeholder engagement, it supports HIA quality and effectiveness, as we just talked about for monitoring evaluation. Each HIA should have a specific engagement approach that's suitable to the needs, and stakeholders, needs of the stakeholders in the context of the HIA. Again, I cannot emphasize how important it is to involve stakeholders in the HIA process in each step. So you might be asking yourself, well, who are stakeholders? For, well, for HIA practice, we think of stakeholders as individuals or organizations who really stand to gain or lose from a decision or process. And these can, uh, stakeholders can include individuals or organizations that are directly affected by the proposed change, have an interest in the impacts, have an active or passive influence on the decision-making or implementation process, or even have an economic or business interest. Stakeholders have really important considerations or, or roles in HIAs because they can raise their concerns. One example I like to tell in my class is there was an HIA done of a oil and mine, um, basically, uh, proposal or mining proposal up in Alaska. And as part of stakeholder engagement, the community talked about the importance of thinking about um, potential risks of this new development on sexually transmitted diseases. So the literature hadn't talked about that. You know, why, how could mining affect sexually, sexually transmitted diseases? But the fact is that the community raised concerns about workers coming into this very remote area, increased sexual activity, and the potential for sexually transmitted diseases to be a problem. So that, to me, is a really clear example of how the community, the stakeholders, raised concerns that were not documented in the peer review literature. And they were able, this HIA was able to look at those potential health impacts. Stakeholders also bring important reflections of experience, knowledge, and expertise. I think about stakeholders as having some of the best data for HIA process. Stakeholders can also help us ground truth our findings and recommendations by ensuring that, they, that their lived reality matches what the data are telling us. Stakeholder engagement is really important in terms of uh, valuing equity and democracy within the HIA process, these core values I mentioned earlier. And stakeholder engagement can help create more support for the implementation of HIA recommendations. Again, I think you've heard me say through several modules that engaging the stakeholders up front throughout the process is really important and provides support for implementing rec HIA recommendations. And we also know that stakeholders can help contribute to the communication and dissemination methods of the HIA findings. This slide up here shows you how HIA stakeholder engagement aligns with the core values that we talked about from the very first lecture I gave. So if you recall that lecture, democracy was one of the core values. And here we have how stakeholder engagement contributes to democracy. We know that stakeholder engagement helps to build capacity for future HIA involvement. I mentioned earlier that one HIA I worked on involved the community helping to conduct and collect survey data. We also know that the HIA helps to create an avenue for including stakeholder voices and to help people feel like they're part of the decision-making processes. The second core value we talked about earlier was equity. And when we think about stakeholder engagement, 
We can support equity, and I had a whole lecture on this, but some sp particular ways for stakeholder engagement is that it helps people have their voices represented in the decision-making process. And we've also seen that it helps to promote equitable decision-making. Regarding the core value of sustainable development, we know that stakeholders can present issues that reflect the needs of both the current and future communities in which they live. And finally, for the fourth core value of ethical use of evidence, we know that stakeholder engagement is, is a way to help remind people of the importance of that information collected from them. It's valued as evidence. Qualitative data, experiences from the stakeholders are part of the evidence in the assessment step. And also, stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier, can help to ground truth the scientific data that we're collecting through our lit review and through our other assessment methods. The approach to stakeholder engagement really needs to reflect the goals of the HIA and the local context. And there are a number of ways to engage stakeholders, and here are a few. One, it's through community steering or advisory groups. I've been involved in a number of HIAs where we have a group of advisors who provide input on the HIA, or there's a community steering group. I remember being engaged in an HIA in Baltimore where at the very first meeting, we met with the community and, and educated them and talked through social determinants of health and how the decision could affect things that they cared about. We also see formal relationship agreements or memoranda of understanding where sectors connect with other sectors as part of stakeholder engagement. For communities, we see interviews, focus groups, surveys, comment forums, a number of ways being used to engage individuals. And then we've also seen websites or articles or more communication types of strategies. Regardless, what's important to remember is that your approach to engage the stakeholders should be the best ones to get to the groups that you care about. Again, if you want to engage policymakers, maybe holding a briefing and, and connecting with them through individual meetings is the best way. Or if you want to connect with the community, maybe going to a neighborhood meeting is the best way to try to connect with, with individuals. It's important, though, to remember that there are best practices around community-based participatory research that I think are really important here. And if we think about those best practices, there are strategies that can be used to ensure that you're reaching the best individuals or, be, or, or reaching the people whose perspectives you want to, to get uh, so that your sample is not as biased or missing some important groups. I know I've been part of stakeholder meetings that have occurred at 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday because that's when people were available. This slide really breaks down all of the steps of the HIA process and the stakeholder roles. I started uh, our time today in talking about screening for the HIA, where we're trying to understand whether or not an HIA should be conducted. Most times, we have in mind a topic that the HIA should be focused on. And sometimes stakeholders are part of that decision, but most times they're not. So I think this, to me, is probably the step of the HIA process with the least stakeholder engagement. Scoping is a great way to involve stakeholders. I've been part of scoping workshops where community members are drawing on the board and on the wall and using post-it notes to try to understand how things are connecting and to really talk about their role in the HIA process. I mentioned earlier doing assessment the community and stakeholders can be involved in gathering and organizing data. They can help to lead um, experiences or lead data collection efforts. During the recommendation step, stakeholders can be part of developing and prioritizing recommendations, identifying strategies to help increase implementation. During reporting, stakeholders have been critical for helping to actually write the report, but really helping to disseminate it getting the information out to the people who need to know about it. And finally, for monitoring evaluation, we've, we've seen stakeholders be part of process evaluations. And again, not as much on impact and outcome, um, but, also, but really part of process evaluations. There are two points that I want to make before I, I move off of this slide. And the first is relates to the assessment step. I have heard from some community members who are involved in HIAs and who are part of what's being called sort of community-led HIAs, where they, not the researchers, are leading the HIAs, that when they do the data collection, the policymakers or decision makers 
don't always fully believe the data because they're not trained researchers. I think this is really problematic for the HIA field. And I think that just because a community group wants to do the assessment phase, it shouldn't be looked at as, as data that are being collected that are not reliable. What I've heard, though, from community groups is that they are engaging with researchers to sort of um, uh, provide technical assistance and to validate the methods being used. So that way, they feel that once the HIA is completed, it's more um, well received and people perceive it as, as valid and reliable. The next thing I want to say is stakeholder engagement in these steps vary widely. I remember being part of an HIA where the stakeholders really didn't want to be involved in the assessment phase, and that's OK. But the opportunity was there for them to be involved in helping to collect data. We even encouraged it to help them build their own capacity. But sometimes they just don't have the time to do that. And again, that's OK. And having the opportunity for stakeholders to be involved in each step is really critical. And whether or not they decide to is, is something that they can decide and that we should be transparent about in the HIA report. There are a number of strategies that we can use to ensure equity and stakeholder engagement. And this slide up here is highlighting some best practices for incorporating equity considerations as part of stakeholder engagement. And I won't go through all of them, but a couple of things I want to highlight off the slide are during the scoping step, for example, in really engaging members of the community who are facing inequities and in setting the goals, developing research questions, identifying methodology, and really sort of thinking through the scope of the analysis. During reporting, we can use culturally and linguistically appropriate media and platforms to really get the messages out. We can help our community members, particularly the ones who are facing inequities, to develop talking points and help them communicate the findings themselves. They are part of the process. They are voices that we should help support um, as they help to share the findings. I also think it's important, again, as I just talked about momentarily, uh, a moment ago in the assessment phase, is to invite members of those communities facing inequities to participate in research. Again, they, they may not want to, but having that opportunity there to help build and support their capacity is really important. So I know I talked through that fairly quickly, but I wanted to just provide an overview of stakeholder engagement, again, a really important part of the HIA process. And one of those aspects of, of impact assessment that differentiates HIAs from some of the other impact assessments I mentioned earlier. On this slide here, uh, there are a number of resources for stakeholder engagement. And I think these are really terrific. And I encourage you to look at them, particularly the guidance and best practices for stakeholder participation in HIA, or the first resource on this slide. This was developed from SOFIA, the HIA Professional Society, a working group there, and I think you'll find it very valuable. Something that's not up here that I mentioned earlier is connecting stakeholder engagement with resources from community-based participatory research, because I think some of those practices are really important for the best ways to engage with stakeholders. So before we wrap up, I want to say thank you to all of you for listening to these lectures and this course. My goal was to introduce you to health in all policies where we started, and HIA is a particular way to advance health in all policies. And you may feel that you're not ready to do an HIA on your own, but I hope you feel that in the future you have learned enough about HIA to consider it as one of those tools in your toolbox when a decision comes up. I am available as a resource moving forward, as well as others out there um, who can help you think through actually how to do an HIA when it's time. But I hope that these short modules have given you enough of an introduction to HIA that you'll find useful as you move forward in your careers. Thank you.